Hey, how's it going, guys? This is Ray. Finally, after reviewing the A7 and the A9, we're looking at the A5 2016. Right, here we have HTC's One A9 as well, as you guys are keep asking for a video comparison between them. Here are the similarities: a relatively small footprint, top-notch build quality, mid-range specifications, and slippery. Speaking of the small footprint, either the A5 or the One A9 would be the perfect choice for a one-handed phone. The A5 is simply a smaller version of the A7, or even the Note 5, with a Gorilla Glass 4 panel on both the front and the back, and an aluminum frame. Without a doubt, the A5 is a premium-looking device. The build quality is absolutely top-notch, and we're also getting a slightly larger 5.2 inches display. Meanwhile, the One A9 has a refreshed design. The metal unibody is definitely cool to touch. Unlike the A5, the more rounded design is more or less smoother to hold. The fingerprint sensor is another similarity. Both the A5 and the One A9 features a fingerprint sensor, which doubles as a home button. MicroSD card slot is also a must. We can choose between expandable storage and dual SIM configuration on the A5. The only SIM tray and the separated microSD card slot on the A9 doesn't offer this flexibility, but keep in mind that there is no LED notification light on the A5. Anyway, to keep it short, they are both well built, but the design on the A5 is more balanced, symmetrical and refined. The glass panels are like melted to the metal frame, it's a more delicate design between the two. The so One A9, on the other hand, is smoother to hold, and probably is the sturdier one. However, with the Snapdragon 615 chip inside the A5 and the refreshed 617 on the One A9, raw performance is not comparable to the flagship offers. Meanwhile, HTC managed to keep the user interface battery smooth, and it is one of the first devices to have Android 6.0 preloaded. The A5 is still running Android 5.1.1, with noticeable frame drops all over the touchscreen interface. Apps opening and gaming performance are both respectable though, they actually handle day-to-day -day affairs without any problem. Mind you, we've got 32 gigs of storage and 3 gigs of RAM on the One A9. The same configuration is available on Samsung's A7 and A9, but not the A5. But functions including multi-window, floating windows, one-handed mode, and theming are all available on the A5, which is a huge plus for a mid-range device. The camera, the One A9, has a much higher price tag than the A5. If you want a better camera, you have to spend more to get the A9. It is actually on par with other flagship devices. The one we have got on the A5 is a great camera for its price, but it doesn't come close to the One A9. The display on the Galaxy A5, however, is truly amazing. Yes, it is 1080p, just like the One A9. The colors are more vibrant, and the white balance is more natural compared to the greenish tone on the A9. The display here on the A5 is simply more pleasing to the eyes, and it is slightly larger at 5.2 inches, without on-screen buttons. The speaker is also slightly richer and louder on the A5. We do like the boom sound speakers, so please bring it back, HTC. Last but certainly not least, the battery life. The A5 packs a significantly larger 29mAh battery and it supports Quick Charge 2.0. The One A9, however, is forward capable with Quick Charge 3.0 through a software update. 
All in all, they are both one of the best one-handed mid to high-end toppers. The A5 is the more delicate, premium-looking and flagship-like device, with a better display, speaker and battery life. While the One A9 offers top-tier camera experience and a smoother experience. Which would be your choice? Comment below. So it's the end of this video. Like this, if you like this, and don't forget to subscribe. Once again, this is Ray. See you next time.